Hello everyone, my name is Victor Herman. This video will be quite different from what I usually create, but in a good way. Throughout the 90 days project, I feel that I've really grown thanks to exploring so many new aspects of the engine. And in this video, I'll be covering one of those aspects, animation. I'll be going over how I approach the animations for this scene, as well as my other scenes for this project. Sequencer is an incredibly powerful tool, but up until this project, I'd mainly viewed it as a tool for animating cameras and fly-throughs, which really only scratches the surface of what it can do. I ended up doing all the animations for this scene in the sequencer, and what really struck me was just how easy and intuitive it was, especially since my experience with animation is very limited. This really is a testament to just how intuitive Unreal Engine is, and how it not only enables, but also encourages artists to grow and explore new aspects of art creation. So to start off, I've created this little pile of books on this table here, and I'll be making one of the books fly from off screen and land on the pile of books. I will be utilizing some of Disney's animation principles, such as timing, anticipation, follow through, slow in and out, arcs, secondary action, and all that jazz. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Let's start off by creating a new sequence and naming it something appropriate. Next, let's find a book to use for our animation. And once happy, hit the little plus track button in the sequencer pane and add it. This will allow us to start animating its various properties. I'll start off by adding a transform keyframe to its current location. And next I'll move it to its starting point off screen and keyframe that as well. And finally I'll just finagle it into its mid location and once again key that. Now we've established the key poses and this will be enough for us to start working. But before we hop into the curve editor and animate further, I want to quickly touch upon the animation principles that I mentioned earlier. In order to make an animation appealing and have character, there are some principles you should try and apply. Slow in and out, also known as ease in, ease out, meaning the animation speeds up in the middle of the sequence, or the motion. Anticipation is basically another word for adding tension or build up before a motion. Then we have arcs and squash and stretch, and that is a way of deforming the actor to exaggerate the motions. And I'm generally not animating with squash and stretch, but it's very good to be aware of arcs and how their shapes and reduction in height can convey material, character, and weight. Then we have secondary action, and that is a way of making certain actions affect the surrounding area. For example, if a character bashes his head on the table, the things on the table bounces up, and I'll be utilizing this principle in the animation we're working on. Let's open up the curve editor and see what's going on there. And once again, I'll have to pause myself before I'm getting too far ahead. The curve editor, long story short, is where you can, among many other things, adjust the interpolation between the keyframes. And it's also a great editor for making adjustments to keyframes values and to get a good bird's eye view of what's happening in the animation. Without diving too deep into all of the features and tools here, let's start off by going over the interpolation modes. By right-clicking the keys or by clicking the buttons up here, you can change their type from linear, automatic, and so on. And this decides how the translations are interpolated between the keyframes. I'll start smoothing out the curves a bit by adjusting the handles to make the curves a bit softer and more even. And I want the orientation of the book to somewhat adhere to the directionality of its travel. And by middle mouse clicking the curve, I can add a new keyframe anywhere. And by dragging it up or down, it goes positive and negative respectively in the translation values. I prefer to edit curves soloed out by selecting separate axes to the left in many cases. It reduces the risk of manipulating the wrong curve and it always frames the values perfectly, automatically. Let's zoom in a bit and focus on the landing. I'll go ahead and make sure the book swoops upwards quite a bit before landing. And this will not only help add some anticipation to the animation, but it'll allow us to add in some secondary action due to the force of the landing. 
In order to get additional control over the curve, you can right click the key you want to edit and set it to be weighted. This will allow you to control the length of each side of the key, allowing you to exaggerate freely. I think it's starting to look like something, but let's add a bit more of a delay and some anticipation to the motion by increasing the height of the animation and delaying the fall just a little bit. Okay, I'm getting pretty happy with the animation now. I'm just gonna go in and adjust the book's orientation a little bit and change the first translation keys to be linear instead of auto. This will cause the animation to start at full speed instantly instead of sort of easing in. Next, I just want to make the entire animation just a little bit faster by selecting all the keys except the first ones and moving them towards the left. This is gonna speed everything up just a little bit. And before moving on to the next animation, I just want to tweak the rotation of the book a little bit to have it align a bit more with its trajectory. And there we go! Time for the most fun part of this animation, in my opinion. The secondary action. I'll start off by adding a bounce to the quote unquote hero book by adding in a couple more frames after its initial landing. And one way of looking at the curves is like a side view of the animation. If the bounce and the arcs look good in the curve editor, it probably looks good in 3D as well. I'll also make sure to add in a slight rotation to the bounce to make it look a little bit more chaotic. If you want an action or animation to be more instant, make sure you set the key to linear to avoid any type of interpolation with the previous key. Okay, let's add in the book underneath to the sequence and have it mimic the hero book's animation, albeit just a little bit delayed and a bit more subtle. Alright, I am actually feeling really good about this. And as you can see, it really is a very minimal effect, but I think it really adds to the character of the animation and to the books themselves. And to help make the shot feel a bit more dynamic and to really show off all our awesome hard work with the secondary action animation, let's do a very simple camera animation. So to start off, just add the camera to the sequence, just like we did with the books, and set the starting location as a starting keyframe and then scrub over all the way to the end and move the camera to its end location and the rotation you want and then just set a key for it. Next just make sure to focus or adjust the focus distance to follow along with the movement of the camera so that the stack of books is in focus at the end keyframe. And once again I'll just set the first keyframe to be linear to make sure it starts off strong and doesn't ease in. And I'll just add in some rotation keys to have the camera somewhat follow the location of the book. Having the camera sort of chase the book with a slight lag just makes it feel a bit more alive and less artificial in my opinion. And the next step is completely optional, but it is possible to add an additive animation track to actors in the sequencer. In this case I have a great animation I found on the Unreal Marketplace. I'll just add a new track, select camera animation and then browse to the animation that I want. Next I'll just slow it down a little bit and then it's good to go. It just adds that little bit of extra flair and realism to the movement of the camera. And there we go. A super simple animation but hopefully it spawned some ideas for your project. And as I said, I am far from a professional animator, but I think that goes to show just how simple the animation tools are in Sequencer. The 90 Days project featured a lot of way more advanced animation than we've ever done in a Quixel project. And I truly think it helps breathe life into the Megascans assets, and it just makes everything so much more interesting. The lessons me and the team learned during this project are definitely something we'll take with us into future projects. And I hope that by us sharing those lessons, we'll let you do the same. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.